In this lesson, you will learn how to read URI path parameters in your Spring MVC web application. Let's assume that we have following URI. I will bring in a new browser window and I will open localhost port number 8080 forward slash, let's say we have users and then forward slash and some random user ID. So this request URI should open a page that displays details of a user with this specific user ID that goes after the forward slash users. Now, to fetch details of this user, a method in the controller class will need to read this value of user ID from URI path parameter. So in this video lesson, you will learn how to do it. Let's go back to our project and let's create a new controller class. I will call this class users controller. We'll annotate it with controller annotation. And now I will create a method that handles HTTP GET request and returns a model. I'll make it return model and view. Let's call it get user. And it will return a model and view. Now, the name of the view is user, so I will also need to create a new HTML page that is called user.html. I'll do it in a few seconds, but to make this method handle HTTP GET request, I'll need to annotate it with GET mapping annotation. And to make this method trigger when a request is sent to forward slash users forward slash some user ID, I'll need to add path property and specify the path to user resource. Users forward slash and then some user ID. Now, notice that the value of user ID here in the path is inside of curly brackets. And this is because the user ID is a dynamic variable. A HTTP request for details of another user with a different user ID will have a different user ID value in URI path. So now we need to read this value and make it available to our method. And it is done with the path variable annotation. So this will make Spring Framework extract the user ID path variable from URI path and bind it to a method argument called user ID. Now notice that the path variable here, user ID, matches the path variable name in the get mapping annotation. This is very helpful where we need to read multiple path variables. For example, let's say we need to read another path variable. Albums forward slash and then some album ID. So in this case, to read the value of album ID path variable and to make it available to our method, we will need to add another path variable annotation. Now each annotation reads its own path variable using the path variable name. With path variable album ID, we read album ID path variable. And with path variable annotation that specifies user ID, we read the user ID value from URI path. But this URI path will actually mean that this request is for album details with this album ID that belongs to this user with this user ID. So it will make sense for us to rename our method to get album instead of get user and then rename the model to be not user but maybe album and then create an HTML page that is called album.html. All right. And now we can add these path variables to a model object and then display them in a view. And to display these values, user ID and album ID, I'll now need to create a view that is called album, but I will call it album.html. So inside of templates folder, I will create a new HTML page and I will call it album.html. We'll change title to album details We'll copy the HTML element from home HTML to specify that this HTML uses timely templates. And I can now display user ID and album ID. And this is it. Now we can run our application and see if it works. So I will save changes and then I will select 
the application menu file i will do right mouse click and i will choose run this application now that my application started on port number 8080 i'll bring in browser window and i will provide localhost port number 8080 users some random user id and this is because at this moment my application doesn't really read user details and album details from database so I can provide some random values, albums, forward slash, some random album ID and hit enter. And here's my output, which contains values of user ID and album ID. So it all worked very well for us. And you now know how to read path variables in your Spring MVC web application.